Friends in Christ, today we begin a 40-day journey toward Easter. We enter the Lenten season to prepare ourselves to welcome the risen Christ. We assume a discipline of self-examination, confession, and penitence. We dedicate ourselves to meditate upon the scriptures and to converse with God in prayer. We seek to be more faithful followers of Christ. And to this end, we come now to worship God. confession. The prophet Joel cried out, Return to the Lord with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts, not your clothing, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we confess that we have been rebellious people. We have broken your covenant and we have tolerated injustice in our land. We have not shared our food with the hungry. We've not sheltered the homeless. We've not aided the poor. We quarrel and fight among ourselves, and we use religion to cover our deceit. Forgive us, O oh God. Restore in us the light of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Declaration of Forgiveness from Isaiah 58, verses 9 and 10. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the spreading of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Know that you are forgiven. And rejoice. Thanks be to God. reading from the book of the prophet of Joel, chapters 2, verses 12 through 18. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning, rending your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 20 through chapter 6, verse 2. Brothers and sisters, 
We are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in, a, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Reading from the Gospel of uh, the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and 16 through 18. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from God in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let the left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and God who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. Whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to God in secret. And God, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by God, who is in secret. And God, who sees in secret, will reward you. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent the 40-day journey leading up to Easter. Lent is a time of self-examination and a time of repentance. On Ash Wednesday, millions of Christians around the world engage in the ancient ritual known as the imposition of ashes. The practice of using ashes as a sign of penitence goes back to the Hebrew people. Christian use of the ashes goes back to the second century, and it was widely used and practiced by the fifth century. In his letter to the church in Rome, the Apostle Paul writes the following, All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. 
Sin can be defined as anything that separates us from God and anything that separates us from other people. And we who bear the sign of the ashes on our foreheads confess that we have sin. We have fallen short of who God wants us to be. We confess that we have moved away from God. And so during this period of Lent, we move closer to God through spiritual disciplines. Traditionally, many people fast or give up something for Lent as, as a way of increasing their self-discipline. The following words are attributed to Pope Francis, and his words help us understand that we can give up something that is unhelpful, but we can also take on something that is helpful. Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your heart with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent so you can listen. Friends, Lent is an opportunity for us to step back from all the things that seem so very important, so very pressing, and instead to make time for God in our lives once more. Because of COVID restrictions, we are not able to come together and receive the imposition of ashes in person. So we must mark this time using our imagination. In just a little while, you will hear a beautiful piece of music, and as, as that music plays, use your finger to draw the sign of the cross, either on your forehead or on the back of your hand. And as you draw that cross, take a moment to reflect on your own journey. During Lent, how will you draw closer to the Creator, the source of all that is? What do ashes mean to you? What do they symbolize? Grief? Endings and beginnings? Death and resurrection? New life and new possibilities? Hope? Love? May your Lenten journey be a thoughtful journey, and may you feel God's Spirit present with you every step of the way. Amen.
of prayer. God, come and save us. The ashes of this day remind us of our mortality. We are but dust. Yet our souls belong to you. Bring us into a season of contrition. Wash away the scars. Plant seeds in the desert. Bring life where death once reigned. Cleanse us with the water of life. O God of all, transform us, restore our sight, Renew our planet. Teach us truth. Bring words that give us wholeness to us and to our communities and to the earth, our island home. Amen. Receive the benediction. Holy God, through the discipline of these 40 days, make your spirit's cleansing fire burn within us. Lift us from the dying embers of our inattention. Mark us with a sign of your holy passion and make us ready to respond to the call of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Amen.